Hello and welcome to the Dementia Capable Webinar Series provided by the Rosalind Carter Institute for Caregiving in partnership with the Georgia Division of Aging Services. Before getting started, we advise having a pen and paper ready to write down any information and links to the resources as they are provided. Otherwise, you will have to view the webinar again to retrieve it later. You may pause the webinar now if needed. Remember that the link to the SurveyMonkey post test will be pasted onto the last slide. The post test will remain open for an indefinite amount of time. Please take it at your earliest convenience, though we encourage immediately following the webinar. A certificate can be provided when entering your email address at the end of the post test. Today's webinar will be Understanding the Different Types of Dementia presented by Laura Bauer. Laura is the National Program Director for Operation Family Caregiver at the Rosalind Carter Institute for Caregiving, RCI, and at Georgia Southwestern State University, GSW. Co-author of RCI's signature training program, Caring for You, Caring for Me, Education and Support for Family and Professional Caregivers, Second Edition, Laura has co-authored numerous journal articles and contributed chapters to Voices of Caregiving, LaChance Publishing 2008, and Recreating Neighborhoods for Successful Aging, Health Professions Press 2008. Laura also teaches six courses in the RCI's Caregiving Issues and Management Certificate Program housed at GSW. Laura has previously worked as a counselor for at-risk youth at an outdoor therapeutic program and as a child abuse investigator. She holds a Bachelor of Science in Psychology and a Master's of Public Administration from Columbus State University and also holds a Certificate in Gerontology from GSW. Laura serves as Vice President of the Maddie J.T. Stepanek Foundation in Rockville, Maryland, sits on the Board of Governors of the We Are Family Foundation in New York City, and the Board of Directors for the Southwest Georgia Victims Assistance Alliance, Inc. She is a member of Phi Kappa Phi, Pi Alpha Alpha, and the American Association of University Women an advocate for social justice, the environment, caregiving issues, and peace, Laura enjoys hiking, camping, fishing, photography, bird watching, dancing, and music of all genres. She and her dog Katie are a certified pet partner animal therapy team, volunteering monthly in her local community at Furlough Charter School, Phoebe Sumter Hospital, and Perfect Care Assisted Living. Welcome, Laura. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. I appreciate being able to bring you this webinar today, talking about the different types of dementia. I always like to start off by, by telling this quote that everyone has seen probably dozens of times. Uh, Mrs. Carter says it frequently. There are only four kinds of people in the world. Those who have been caregivers, those who currently are caregivers, those who will be caregivers, and those who will need caregivers. And the reason this is so impactful is because caregiving is something that if it has not touched you yet in your life, it definitely will at some point. It may hit uh, when you're expecting it to hit, or it can be the result of something unexpected, and it can hit you just all in an instant. So we, uh, we all are going to be caregivers. We're all going to need caregivers. And so it's helpful for us to reflect on that when we're talking about any disease or disability that... Um, is going to necessitate the need for caregivers. Just a tiny bit of background about the Rosalind Carter Institute for Caregiving. We were established 30 years ago, 1987, here on the campus of Georgia Southwestern State University because this is Mrs. Carter's alma mater. And you may be familiar with the wonderful work that's done out of the Carter Center in Atlanta, Georgia. But Mrs. Carter, even though she's very actively involved in that work, she wanted to do something that was her legacy separate from President Carter, and so she looked closer to home. Uh, they live in Plains, Georgia, 10 miles away from the campus of Georgia Southwestern State University, and it was very cutting edge 30 years ago to start talking about the needs for, of, of caregivers to have support. Uh, nobody else was really doing that at the time, so she was a real trendsetter 30 years ago. The, the way that we uh, are able to support caregivers 
is, is a big, huge bunch of different ways, but we establish local, state, national, and international partnerships that are committed to building quality, long-term home and community-based services. It's important to recognize that caregivers are the long-term healthcare system in the United States. So without giving them support and encouragement, you know, we really would be in, in quite, quite a terrible spot because they do this work for free and it's very important that we give them support and encouragement for that role. So my reason for always enjoying uh, talking about uh, Alzheimer's disease or, or other forms of dementia is this photograph right here. This is my father, Daniel Bauer, and me when I was six months old. My father was an air traffic controller. He served in the Navy during the Korean War, but unfortunately, um, he lost his life to Alzheimer's disease. He died five years ago of the disease, and so it's very close to, to me and my family uh, to talk about Alzheimer's disease and what that does to not only the person with the disease, but the rest of the family. So I just like to show that picture to sort of set the tone. So I am going to start talking a little bit about dementia broadly before I start talking about the different forms of dementia. We know the brain is made up of billions of nerve cells, and these cells are connected with each other in a communication network. Dementia describes brain diseases that affect either memory, language skills, visual perception, ability to focus and pay attention, and ability to reason and solve problems. What causes dementia? Dementia can be caused by damage to brain cells in any of these ways. It can come as the result of a head injury. It could be a blockage to the, to the blood flow. Or it could be certain types of proteins that build up and interrupt brain function. So it doesn't really matter which thing happens because when brain cells are damaged, the brain cannot carry out the work that it usually does. Different parts of the brain are responsible for making different parts of the body work. So how or where the cell damage occurs depends on the type of dementia. Now everybody has heard about Alzheimer's disease and for good reason. Alzheimer's disease is the, is the number one form of dementia and uh, it's estimated 60 to 80% of all dementia is classified as Alzheimer's disease. So we'll start there and we'll talk about that first. Symptoms of Alzheimer's disease are difficulty remembering recent conversations, names or events, and it's often an early clinical system. Apathy and depression are also often early symptoms. Later symptoms can include impaired communication, poor judgment, disorientation or confusion, behavior changes, and difficulty speaking, swallowing, and walking. The brain changes that take place with Alzheimer's disease, uh, the hallmark abnormalities are deposits of the protein fragment beta amyloid, called plaques, and twisted strands of the protein tau, called tangles, as well as evidence of nerve cell damage and death in the brain. Currently, there is not a cure for Alzheimer's disease, but drug and some non-drug treatments might help with both cognitive and behavioral symptoms brought about by Alzheimer's disease. The second form of dementia I'm gonna talk about is vascular dementia. Uh, this has been called multi-infarct dementia. Uh, it used to be called post-stroke dementia because uh, the symptom of this is it usually comes, uh, comes about after a person has suffered a stroke or multiple strokes. Impaired judgment or the ability to make decisions is a symptom. To plan or organize is more likely to be the initial symptom as opposed to the memory loss that we think about with Alzheimer's disease. So uh, think back to Alzheimer's disease and you think about being able to not remember things. This is more about impaired judgment or impaired ability to make decisions. It occurs from blood vessel blockage or damage leading to strokes or bleeding in the brain. 
The location, number, and size of the brain injury determines how the individual's thinking and physical function are going to be affected. Brain imaging can often detect blood vessel problems implicated in vascular dementia. In the past, evidence for vascular dementia was used to exclude a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease and vice versa, but that practice is no longer considered consistent with pathologic evidence, which shows that the brain changes of several types of dementia can be present all at the same time. When any two or more types of dementia are present at the same time, the individual is considered to have what we call mixed dementia. The FDA has not approved any drug specifically to treat symptoms of vascular dementia, but there is some clinical trial evidence that certain drugs that have been approved to treat Alzheimer's disease might also offer, offer a modest benefit in people diagnosed with vascular dementia. The third type of dementia is dementia with Lewy bodies. People with this type of dementia often have memory loss and thinking problems common to Alzheimer's disease, but they're more likely to have initial or early symptoms such as sleep disturbances, well-formed visual hallucinations, slowness, gait imbalance, or other movement features usually seen in Parkinson's disease. The brain changes are that Lewy bodies are abnormal aggregations or clumps of the protein alpha syniclin. When they develop in a part of the brain called the cortex, dementia can result. Alpha syniclin also aggregates in the brains of people with Parkinson's disease, but the aggregates may appear in a pattern that is different from dementia with Lewy bodies. The brain changes of dementia with Lewy bodies alone can cause dementia, or again, can be present at the same time as the brain changes of Alzheimer's disease and or vascular dementia, with each abnormality contributing to the development of the dementia. Again, when this happens, the individual is said to have mixed dementia. There are no treatments that can slow or stop the brain cell damage caused by dementia with Lewy bodies. So current strategies focus on helping with the symptoms. I've already talked a little bit about mixed dementia. In mixed dementia, abnormalities linked to more than one cause of dementia are, are occurring simultaneously in the brain. Recent studies suggest that mixed dementia is more common than previously thought. Characterized by the hallmark abnormalities of more than one cause of dementia, most commonly Alzheimer's and vascular dementia, dementia, also dementia with Lewy bodies. Because most people with mixed dementia are diagnosed usually with a single type of dementia, physicians often base their prescribing decisions on the type of dementia that's been diagnosed. In other words, they've probably already been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease or maybe vascular dementia instead of mixed dementia. So even though they may have some of these other types of dementia going on, they're probably only being prescribed medication to deal with one of those. So there's no drug that is specifically approved by the FDA to treat mixed dementia, which is more than one type of dementia occurring simultaneously within the same person at the same time. Parkinson's disease dementia. Uh, this is one a lot of people have not really heard about. Uh, we know pretty much about what the symptoms of, of Parkinson's disease are, uh, and usually that's problems of movement. But if dementia develops, the symptoms can be similar to dementia with Lewy bodies. Alpha synecline clumps are likely to begin in an area deep in the brain called the substantia nigra. These clumps are thought to cause degeneration of the nerve cells that produce dopamine. There are no treatments to slow or stop the brain cell damage caused by Parkinson's disease dementia. Current strategies focus on helping symptoms. So again, this is a little bit different and this occurs in someone who already has Parkinson's disease and while they may not have had dementia to start off with, they may get dementia that is specific to the Parkinson's disease 
as they go on with their disease process with the Parkinson's. The sixth type of dementia that I'm going to talk about is frontotemporal dementia. This really includes uh, a lot of different dementias, such as behavioral variant, fr frontal temporal dementia, primary progressive aphasia, Pick's disease, corticobasal degeneration, and progressive supranuclear palsy. So all of those together are called frontotemporal or FTD dementia. The typical symptoms with this dementia are changes in personality and behavior and difficulty with language. Nerve cells in the front and side regions of the brain are especially affected. But there are no distinguishing microscopic abnormalities in the brain in all cases. People with FTD generally develop their symptoms at a younger age, usually around age 60, and survive for fewer years than those with Alzheimer's disease. There are no specific treatments for any of the frontal temporal subtypes. There are medications that can help reduce agitation, irritability, and or depression. These treatments should be used to help improve quality of life. Kruschfeldt jacob disease, I'm going to call this CJD for short. This is the most common human form of a group of rare fatal brain disorders affecting people and certain other mammals. Variant CJD, known as mad cow disease, occurs in cattle and sometimes has been transmitted to people under certain circumstances. This is a rapidly fatal disorder that impairs memory and coordination and causes behavior changes. What happens in the brain with this is Misfolded prion proteins cause a domino effect in which prion proteins throughout the brain continue to misfold and thus cause malfunction. There is no treatment that can slow or stop the underlying brain cell destruction caused by CJD and any other prion disease. Various drugs have been tested but have not shown any benefits so far. Clinical studies of potential CJD treatments are complicated because this is an extremely rare disease and it has a rapid progression. So the person generally dies so quickly they don't have time to, to have an idea of what might work or not work. So research is ongoing on this. Normal pressure hydrocephalus. Symptoms of this type of dementia are difficulty walking, memory loss, and an inability to control urination. This is caused by a buildup of fluid in the brain, so this is a totally different type of dementia yet again. Researchers have not found effective non-surgical treatments for MPH. And drugs that remove excess fluid throughout the body, like diuretics, have not been shown to help. But sometimes it can be treated with a surgical insertion of a shunt which is a long, thin tube that drains the excess CSF from the brain to the abdomen. Difficulty walking is the symptom most likely to improve after surgery. The thinking changes in bladder control are less likely to get better. The ninth form of uh, dementia that I'm going to talk about is Huntington's disease. This is a progressive brain disorder caused by a single defective gene on chromosome four. So this is entirely genetic. Symptoms include abnormal involuntary movements, a severe decline in thinking and reasoning skills, and irritability, depression, and other mood changes. The gene defect causes abnormalities in a brain protein that over time will lead to worsening symptoms. There is currently no cure for Huntington's disease and no way to slow or stop the brain changes that it causes. So yet again, treatments focus on managing the symptoms that come along with it. Wernicke-Kursakoff syndrome 
is a chronic memory disorder caused by severe deficiency of thiamine, which is vitamin B1. The most common cause is alcohol misuse. Memory problems may be strikingly severe, but other thinking and social skills might seem relatively unaffected. Thiamine helps brain cells produce energy from sugar. When thiamine levels fall too low, brain cells cannot generate enough energy to function properly. So some experts recommend that heavy drinkers and others at risk of thiamine deficiency take oral supplements of thiamine and other vitamins under their doctor's supervision. In some cases, there may even be uh, uh, a doctor saying that you need to get IV treatments that are putting more thiamine into your bloodstream. Again, this one is, is caused by alcohol abuse, and that is creating the severe deficiency of the thiamine in the body. That I know that was a lot of information about 10 very different forms of, of dementia. All of that information came from the Alzheimer's Association. If you go to their website, which is www.alz.org, you can find out a lot more detail about each one of those. I just gave you a little snapshot so that you could see that there really are a lot of other types of dementia, but I did not delve too deeply into each one of those. So if you have a concern about any of those 10, you can find a lot of additional information on www.alz.org. But the final thing I wanted to leave you with, the reason that proper diagnosis is critical uh, just jumping to a conclusion that a person has Alzheimer's disease or has vascular dementia because they've had strokes or has um, any of the other ones that I, that I talked about, you really need to get a firm diagnosis because even though there's no cure for dementia, with some types, there are ways that you can slow it down and maintain mental function, but you need to diagnose it in the early stages for that to be even an option for you to look at. A proper diagnosis can help people get the right information and support for their specific type of dementia. And that's gonna help those close to them prepare and plan for the future. With the right support and encouragement, those who have a dementia diagnosis can take an active role in managing their condition. And then last but certainly not least, a diagnosis, a proper diagnosis of what type of dementia it is, is critical for research and understanding more about the causes of dementia. Research is how new treatments are going to be developed. So it's very critical that you take the time and take the effort and get second and third opinions if necessary to find exactly what the proper diagnosis is for the form of dementia that you're dealing with. Thank you. Well, again, thank you so much, uh, Laura. And again, to the viewers, here's the post-test link. Um, take it at your earliest convenience. A certificate can be provided whenever you enter your email address at the end of the post-test. Please remember to view the other webinars in our Dementia Capable webinar series, which is provided by the Rosalind Carter Institute for Caregiving in partnership with the Georgia Division of Aging Services. Thank you so much, and we hope you'll join us again.